membrane structure, membrane proteins 2. So this video is really going to focus on two core shapes of proteins, the alpha helix. Whoa, that's not an earthquake. And the alpha he helix and then the beta pleated sheet. And in particular, how these two core aspects of secondary folding in proteins can lead to membrane protein localization. Okay, so we're going to return to this, vi this figure, figure 11-20, and this shows off those shapes. In particular, um, notice that, as I mentioned before, that there are a lot of proteins that have an alpha helix, which allows them to span the membrane, and they can cross once or multiple times. Uh, and we can see another one here with the monolayer associated alpha helix. A second possibility is a beta pleated sheet, which can form the beta barrel um, over here. And so basically for those core secondary structures, um, I want you to know a little bit about how that goes down. So for the alpha helix versus the beta sheet, again, these are common shapes within membrane proteins. And the alpha helix can either produce a single pass transmembrane protein or a multi-pass transmembrane protein. The beta sheet forms the beta barrel. And so a big thing to keep in mind for each of those structures is first off, um, where is the backbone of the polypeptide chain? And secondly, where are the side groups? of the polypeptide chain. And in particular, keep track of the location of the um, polar versus nonpolar. And I'm going to abbreviate polar for P, P for polar, um, and NP for nonpolar. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the backbone of the polypeptide chain. This is hydrophilic. And so just the backbone by itself um, is not enough to locate a protein within the membrane. They need to have the uh, nonpolar regions, which would be right here, um, across this whole figure. And you should also keep in mind this is not perfectly exclusive, that every single amino acid within, um, say, the membrane, the central membrane part that is nonpolar, not every single amino acid is going to be nonpolar. There might be a couple other ones speckled in there. Okay, so these are some figures from your book, uh, specifically figure 1122, figure 1123, and figure 1124. So let's start off looking at uh, figure 1122. And basically, here we see the alpha helix in this kind of darker green. And then uh, the green little circles off to the side, those are to symbolize the amino acid side chains. And so you can tell from the uh, cell membrane, so we see the phospholipids here, you can tell that the, the side groups that are here must be nonpolar. And I'm not going to label all of them, but note that... Um, in general, most if not all of these side groups are going to be nonpolar. And so basically what that means is that um, through this alpha helix here, the way that the alpha helix forms, as you know already, is due to hydrogen bonds between the backbone. And this happens to be a very stable formation um, for proteins and very effective uh, way for a protein to fold and with nonpolar side chains to be located within a membrane. So this alpha helix is a very effective and kind of efficient uh, shape. Um, it maximizes hydrogen bonds
between the backbone of the polypeptide, so the different um, nitrogens, carbons, hydrogens, etc. And this is especially important because within the central portion of the membrane here, water is excluded due to these hydrophobic um, side chains. And so some of the only ways that the backbone, the chemicals that make up the backbone of the polypeptide chain can form a stable structure um, is through this alpha helix. Okay, next let's uh, check out the multi-pass uh, transmembrane protein. And this is when we have more than one alpha helix. In this particular example, there are five alpha helixes, which are all shown in this kind of turquoise color. Uh, but there are lots of different numbers of um, times that the it might pass. There could be three or seven. It doesn't even have to be um, an odd number. It could also be even. And basically, in this way, especially when we have a number of alpha helices, there can be an aqueous or polar pore. And so take a, t a second to label which parts are going to be nonpolar and polar. Basically, I'll just fill those in now. So there will be nonpolar side chains that are going to extend out um, from each of the alpha helices. Uh, but then in the center part here, this is where we're going to find polar amino acids. Uh, so polar amino acid side chains. And this means that uh, polar molecules could pass through uh, this this uh, pore which forms here. The last example over here is of a beta barrel and as we've talked about these already in class I'll just do a quick run through to remember that um, we can form a beta sheet with this structure and so for a beta barrel the um, amino acid side chains which are going to alternate are going to alternate uh, polar, nonpolar, polar, nonpolar. And so when this folds up into this barrel structure the polar side chains will all point towards the um, center, and the nonpolar ones, if we think about this as a longer structure, um, the nonpolar ones will be pointing towards the membrane. And so here, this would be in uh, the cell membrane. Some examples of molecules that form a beta barrel include porin proteins. These are found in the mitochondria and the chloroplasts um, in the inner membranes, and these allow a variety of different polar molecules to pass through them. And so the, uh, basically this is here, if we turn this on its side towards us, you'd see a big opening, um, and so basically things can move through here.